Hi everyone, welcome to our series of short talks as we explore a series of different objects from our museum collections. I'm Glenn Rodley and I'm Curator of Natural Science at the Pottery's Museum and Art Gallery here in Stoke-on-Trent. As much as I'd love to stay and enjoy this cake, I'd rather show you a couple of really special objects we've got downstairs in the store, so I'll see you down there. So this is our biology store, it's where we keep all the zoology and botany specimens that aren't currently on display in the public galleries, where they can be accessed for research, education or temporary exhibitions. Um, but the two objects I'd like to show you today are just down here. These are passenger pigeons, um, two of three specimens that we have here at the museum. They're originally from the collection of Sir Beville Stanier, who was an MP in Shropshire until his death in 1921. The pigeons were held at the Brampton Museum in Newcastle under Lyme for about four years after Beville Stanier's death, before they moved to the Hanley Museum on Pall Mall in 1924, and finally here, where the Natural History Collection is transferred in 1978. They're not currently on display, as our permanent natural science galleries focus on the nature that can be found around Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire, and these aren't something you can find locally, um, they hail from North America. Once upon a time, these birds were so numerous that there are tales of flocks over a kilometre wide blocking out the sun as they passed overhead, with their global population being estimated at over 3 billion. They were migratory birds. The name passenger pigeon comes from the French passager passing by, as does the scientific name Ectopistes migratorius, and they likely gathered in such huge numbers as a defence against predators. You're less likely to get eaten if you're in the middle of a cloud of equally tasty mates. A classic passage by American naturalist John James Audubon describes a passenger pigeon migration that he witnessed in 1813. He wrote, I dismounted, seated myself on an eminence, and began to mark with my pencil, making a dot for every flock that passed. In a short time, finding the task which I had undertaken impracticable, as the birds poured in in countless multitudes, I rose, and counting the dots then put down, found that 163 had been made in 21 minutes. I travelled on, and still met more the farther I proceeded. The air was literally filled with pigeons. The light of noonday was obscured as a by an eclipse. The dung fell in spots not unlike melting flakes of snow, and the continued buzz of wings had a tendency to lull my senses to repose. I cannot describe to you the extreme beauty of their aerial evolutions, when a hawk chanced to press upon the rear of the flock. At once, like a torrent, with a noise like thunder, they rushed into a compact mass, pressing upon each other towards the centre. In these almost solid masses, they darted forward in undulating and angular lines, descended and swept close over the earth with inconceivable velocity, mounted perpendicularly so as to resemble a vast column, and when high, were seen wheeling and twisting within their continued lines, which then resembled the coils of a gigantic serpent. Before sunset, I reached Louisville, distant from Hardensburg, 55 miles. The pigeons were still passing in undiminished numbers and continued to do so for three days in succession. But sadly, despite their unbelievable abundance in 18th and 19th century America, the only place you're likely to see a passenger pigeon today is in a museum because they are now extinct. Like their more famous relatives, the dodos, which are also a kind of pigeon, the demise of the passenger pigeon was also caused by human overhunting. Long hunted by Native Americans, the passenger pigeon populations only really started to suffer after the invasion of North America by European settlers, particularly in the 19th century when hunting really intensified. Their incredible densities, which protected them from the hawk attack observed by John James Audubon, made them easy targets for human hunters. Just aiming a shotgun into a flying cloud of pigeons could easily bring down five birds with one shot. Passenger pigeons quickly became a source of cheap food, which further encouraged their being hunted, and the pigeons faced another pressure, habitat loss. As colonisers cleared the forests to make way for agriculture, the pigeons lost their roosting sites. And even where nesting sites were available, people targeted those too, poking baby pigeons out of trees with sticks or cutting down whole forests to get at the birds. By the mid-1800s, Pigeon hunting had become commercialised, with vast numbers being harvested and shipped across North America for sale as food. They were also targeted by farmers wishing to protect their crop from hungry flocks. The vast numbers of the pigeons made them seem like an infinite resource, but of course there's no such thing. With mass slaughter and nowhere to breed, it didn't take long for the passenger pigeon numbers to start decreasing. As early as 1856, French novelist Benedict Henry Revoil wrote, Everything leads to the belief that the pigeons, which cannot endure isolation and are forced to flee or to change their way of living according to the rate at which North America is populated by the European inflow, will simply end by disappearing from this continent. And if the world does not end this before a century, I will wager that the amateur of ornithology will find no more wild pigeons, except those in the museums of natural history. And of course he was right. By the 1870s, the decline was being noticed and campaigns were being fought to try and protect the species. 
But despite conservation laws being passed, uh, the big pigeon trapping enterprises continued unabated, with few prosecutions taking place to deter them. It's thought that the last wild birds were shot in the first decade of the 20th century. This left the few passenger pigeons that were kept in captivity, and in 1909 only three pigeons were known to remain of the species. Two males and a female kept at Cincinnati Zoo. Despite the zoo's best efforts to breed the pigeons, the last of the males died in July 1910, leaving the female, Martha, as the last of her species. The passenger pigeon is one of the few species that we can pinpoint the exact moment of its extinction. At the time of recording, the passenger pigeon has been extinct for 106 years, 4 months and 21 days, since Martha was found on the floor of her cage on the afternoon of September 1st, 1914. Her body was sent to the Smithsonian Institution, where it remains to this day on display in the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. So unfortunately, there was no happy ending for the passenger pigeons, but so sudden was their disappearance that it was one of the first extinctions to really raise the importance of wildlife conservation in the eyes of the general public. Their extinction prompted the introduction of new conservation laws which benefited other species, and the case study of the passenger pigeon has been used as an example to show that a species can still be at risk even if population numbers are high. So at least some lessons have been learned from their tragedy. I hope you've enjoyed today's story. Uh, be sure to check our website and social media channels for future films from the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery.